everybody, and welcome to another episode of my JavaScript story. This week, we're talking to Bart Wood. Bart, do you want to say hi? Yes, hello. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, well, we had you on, man, it's been almost <laughs> exactly five years um, yeah. since the episode released, episode 96 of JavaScript Jabber. We talked about the challenges of building large single-page applications. Yes, it was a long time ago. Yeah, if I remember right, you were working for... I don't know if we actually talked about it. You were working for Henry Shine. That's right. Still at Henry Shine. Still at Henry Shine. Okay. Yep. This episode is sponsored by Sentry.io. Recently, I came across a great tool for tracking and monitoring problems in my apps. Then I asked them if they wanted to sponsor the show and allow me to share my experience with you. Sentry provides a terrific interface for keeping track of what's going on with my app. It also tracks releases so I can tell if what I deployed makes things better or worse. They give full stack traces and as much information as possible about the situation when the error occurred to help you track down the errors. Plus, one thing I love, you can customize the context provided by Sentry. So, if you're looking for specific information about the request, you can provide it. It automatically scrubs passwords and secure information, and you can customize the scrubbing as well. Finally, it has a user feedback system built in that you can use to get information from your users. Oh, and I also love that they support open source to the point where they actually open source Sentry if you want to self-host it. Use the code devchat at sentry.io to get two months free on Sentry's small plan. That's code devchat at sentry.io. Um, still working on that same app? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, actually, um, it's grown. It's gotten quite large. We're getting a bunch of new customers on it. It's gotten huge. And so now it's um, getting global We're in a couple other countries and we're actually going through some huge migrations right now to um, different technologies. So, yeah. Very cool. I was going to say, I think when, back, back then when we talked, you were using Backbone and uh, things have moved a little bit since then. That's right. Um, we, uh, we kind of built our own framework on top of Backbone that handled um, browser push, you know, um, syncing models to the client server. It did quite a bit. So um, we, we stuck with that for a long time and it actually, it's been really successful to, for us. Um, we did evaluations of React and we were pretty close to moving to it, but we didn't. And now we're finally migrating to Vue.js. So we're going through, it's probably around 250,000, 300,000 lines of code. Um, so it's going to be a massive effort to go to Vue. Wow. Yeah. Well, I would love to get you on Views on Vue, our Vue podcast, and talk about that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, in the meantime, um, I'm going to start uh, asking questions about things that are a little deeper in the past. Um, and th this is always interesting to me to just see where people came from and how they got into programming and into the technologies that they're using. So uh, let's start at the very beginning. How did you get into programming? So um, I was an economics major in school and I was planning on going through and getting an MBA. And um, my dad asked me to take a programming class because he needed help with some of the programs that he was using. He's a finance professor. Mm -hmm. So um, I said, okay. And I hated the class the entire semester and I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I hated being in the labs and, the teacher, I didn't like him at all. And so, but in the last week, things kind of clicked and I realized I was building things. And, um, and that was kind of it. Once I kind of got the vision of it after the end of the semester, it was programming C. Um, right. I switched majors and then I, and then I did comp sci and I, I was hooked. So I, I couldn't believe people were paying me money for, for building things. It was fun. So. That's awesome. Uh, where did you go to school? Uh, BYU. So I got a bachelor's and a, and a master's there. So in comp sci. Very nice. We probably should also clarify that uh, your last name is Wood. My last name is Wood. We are not related as far as we know. Now, and what's really weird is I've got um, a son named Charles. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a, that's a good name. Yeah. Um, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, maybe through the Utah connection, maybe we are related somehow. But yeah, I grew up here in Utah. Um, I went to BYU. I got a computer engineering degree. And uh, yeah, anyway, so it's just kind of funny. We have a little in common there. Um, so you get, you get it. I mean, what was it about programming? Initially, um, you didn't like it and then you did like it. So yeah, what was it that clicked? 
Well, I had some misconceptions on computers and um, my dad got me a 386 that I hated and I threw in the garbage and I told him I used it. So he was happy. Um, but I, I really didn't, I didn't understand that computers, you were building things, right? And so um, I thought it was mostly about maintenance of upgrading the OS and learning keyboard strokes and all that kind of stuff. In, in, uh, in junior high, my favorite class was um, Shaw because we took apart a lawnmower engine and we put it back together again. And it was, it was really fun, you know, taking the engine apart, putting it back together. And when it clicked it for me that I, I was building things, that I was taking something out of my mind and putting it on the screen with almost no effort, um, that, you know, it was the creative process of, of being able to create something. Um, and I think if more people understood that about, about programming, it's actually a ton of fun once, once you figure out, you know, once you catch that vision. Yeah. So. Yeah, for me, it was kind of the same thing. I took the computer science classes at, in college, and I thought it was dumb. <laughs> I just did. And yeah, then I, uh, I started working with some guys that were building some stuff on the side, and I started working on that. And then it was like, oh, oh, this is, this is kind of handy. And then it was, wow, I, I can actually like, make a difference with this. And that's when it clicked for me. So yeah, same kind of thing. Cool. So, so you get in, you get your degree in computer science. Um, what was your first job writing code? Actually, um, I'd only taken, um, uh, so I took an intro to C class and then I took the two foundational computer science programming classes and um, I got connected with a professor who did 3D visualization software. Mm -hmm. And he said he was gonna pay me money to do this. And I was like, holy crap, really? And so um, he had me do some freelance work. And at first I was super intimidated and I looked at the code for about two weeks and I just told him, I, I can't do this. And he said, well, give it another try. And so I spent the weekend playing around with the Java 3D packages and, I, and it clicked and I got it working. And so I was real excited. And then I started doing work for the guy and I worked and he got me hooked up with a couple other companies. And so um, for the first couple of years, I was a, a contract programmer um, doing Java, mostly 3D visualization, and then some other apps. And so that was really my first job um, where somebody was paying me to do it. And it, what's really cool is that um, I had a brother, an older brother, who was interviewing with one of those companies, and they were still using my visualization software. Um, oh, wow. I could not believe that. And so I was like, holy crap, people are still using that? So, yeah. Um, so that was that was my first job, and it was really creative. It was just... You know, so they would, I would go into the office every two or three weeks and they'd say what they wanted and I'd program it up and they'd pay me and life was good. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So how did you end up at Henry Schein? Uh, so um, I, I went to Exxon for seven years um, in Houston for mm -hmm. my first full-time job after graduating and that was a lot of fun. Um, and did a lot of C++ and C Sharp um, data visualization. And then I went to Goldman Sachs for a year and did a lot of really um, uh, programming on some pretty old stuff, porting mainframe stuff over with Java. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, it was surprisingly, um, uh, it wasn't great software. And then um, <laughs> went to Henry Schein, and at the time they said, hey, we're going to create this, um, app in Java and it's um, going to be a REST API and I thought they were crazy um, but it sounded kind of fun and so I uh, JavaScript so it's going to be a JavaScript fit client and that was before the word single page app existed right we called we called it a mega app at the time and um, so I got to Henry Shine and and uh, been there ever since so nice so uh, I'm curious then as, as you've gone on and uh gotten into JavaScript, it, it sounds like most of your career was writing Java. So is, is there a contrast? Is, is there a technology set you like better? Or yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious about that transition and how you feel about it. Yeah. So I, I was mostly Java and then um, .NET and then C++ um, before I came here. And in fact, on my, on my interview, they asked me about JavaScript in 2011 and I said, Oh, it's, um, it's not a good technology. Don't, don't use it for anything. <laughs> and, and, uh, 
So they're like, okay, don't worry, you don't have to use JavaScript. We're, we're using Java on the back end, and you can do that with um, Groovy, which I thought was pretty neat at the time. And so I was like, but I got to the team, and there were um, three developers, and none of them wanted to do JavaScript. And so, um, and I was like, man, somebody got to do it. And so I jumped in, and I, we were looking at um, EXTJS and Knockout. I think Knockout barely came out and Backbone barely came out when we were on this. Sprout Core was still kind of a thing. And so we're just like, all right, somebody got to do it. And um, I started playing around with it. And I found that it was more instant gratification than Java. Like I could have stuff up and running within hours, you know, within and have it deployed to NPM and, and reusable. And um, I could test it in Chrome and, and have it running within minutes or hours as opposed to, you know, days um, with um, Grails and Java and other technologies. So it was more about um, how, how quickly things could move with it and how flexible it was. Like we use Backbone, we really extended the heck out of it. And um, the prototype inheritance, um, now I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. And especially with ECMAScript 6, that was a game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, we're porting our back end now from Grails to um, Node.js. We, we did a big evaluation um, on uh, .NET Core, Python, um, Django, and um, uh, Spring Boot. And uh, we decided to go with um, Node. And so now it's all JavaScript in our stack. Hey guys, let me tell you about Clubhouse. I swear, I've used every project management software there is out there, and I hated project management software. Now I have Clubhouse. Overall, it's simple and straightforward to use, but it has enough of the integrations and power features you need to get the job done without getting confusing. This means that I can use it, and the non-technical members of my team can figure out what they need from it. It also makes it easy for me to zoom out and see what's going on overall before zooming back in and specifying more work that needs to be done or picking the next task for me to tackle. They integrate with all the systems that you'd expect and have a REST API for, well, the REST. If you go to https clubhouse.io slash jsstory, you can get two months free instead of the standard 14-day trial for any team size. Once again, that's https clubhouse.io slash jsstory. That's really cool. Yeah. What, what's the transition been like? Uh, it hasn't been too bad so far. Um, we're moving to a uh, public API. And so we're kind of externalizing all of our code for partners now. And that was, that was a natural progression, right? And so we're like, all right, we're going to change some of our REST contracts. Um, because we're already doing that, we might as well switch technologies because it's gonna be part of a rewrite anyways. And so we're going um, REST, call, REST call by REST call and module by module on the front end. Um, frankly, we've only done three modules so far on the front end. We've got a lot more work to do. Um, on the back end, we've probably only ported about 25% of it. But so far, it's been really great. Um, the development speed that we've been experiencing is awesome. Um, it's just, you know, we're, we're using um, Express with um, SQLize, and sometimes we're using Type Goose, and it's just, it's just fun to program it. You know, it just goes fast. The stack traces are small. Um, the development environment is super clean, super quick. We don't have stack traces that have, you know, bloat of 20 years of development. Um, so it's, it's been awesome. So one other thing that I'm curious about is uh, a lot of people, they do coding in their spare time. Do you, do you have like a hobby project you work on too, or is it mostly the stuff at work? Yeah, actually I do. Um, uh, me and my brother are um, playing around with some stuff um, to um, create a SaaS um, task automation tool. So um, in my own work environment, I found that sometimes it's difficult to um, automate things, um, jobs. So we use Ansible, mm -hmm. um, um, some Docker um, and uh, um, we've, team, we've used Team City in the past. Uh, my brother uses Jenkins. And so we see that um, sometimes it's kind of a pain to set the stuff up. And so we're... <laughs> yeah, some yeah, of it. Yeah, some of it really. <laughs> and it shouldn't be. And like yeah. we want sports timers to run jobs sometimes. And 
So we're creating something that can be up and running in like two minutes um, and just for fun. So, yep. Very cool. And what are you writing that in? Um, <laughs> we're um, writing it in Node. And so it's Vue.js on the front end, Node on the back end with RabbitMQ as our message bridge. And we're hosting it on Heroku because it's so stinking fast to get it up and running. So, nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, one other thing that I'm curious about is if somebody watched you over the course of your programming career, uh, what, what lessons or takeaways would they get from it? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I never really thought of it. Um, I think that um, the one thing that has helped me out more than anything is being open to um, filling um, roles that other people might not want to. Mm -hmm. And not being uh, uncomfortable in, in an environment where there are no requirements. And so um, being able to go in with projects that aren't well-defined and um, being able to kind of see a need and then fill it um, is probably the best thing that somebody who's watching me said, oh, well, out of all the mistakes he's made, what's one thing that he's done well? Um, hopefully it was that, that, uh, you know, if you see something that on a project that is lacking that you, you step in and you fill it. So, yeah, I agree. And I've seen so many people who felt like their career was stagnating and that was the thing that, that pushed them over the edge. Yeah. They either learned something that helped them out in the next job or get the next job or somebody noticed it at the company they were at and it paid off that way. Yeah. Very cool. Well, um, Let's go ahead and do some picks. Do you have some things you want to shout out about on the show? Um, yeah, I think last time I, I shouted out for Way of Kings. And so that whole series is pretty awesome um, from Brandon Sanderson. The, the book series is quite good. Um, yeah, I was and, waiting for the next one with bated breath. And he started yeah. a new series. And I'm like, come on, man. I know. I know. It's, it's, sometimes I don't like starting a series until it's over. Yeah. Um, forever um so i guess i'd go with that one that one's still my pick nice that's a good one um i guess one thing that i'll shout out about and and this isn't something that i pick because i love i i'm picking it because it's very helpful um and that's linkedin and it's funny to me because as as social networks go it's not my favorite and to be honest i don't really like using it but it is so handy if you need to connect with somebody. <clears throat> so uh, generally what I'm doing with it is I'm either reaching out to people who work for a company that I think would make a good sponsor for the shows or reaching out to people who would make good guests for the shows and things like that. And it, it makes these people extremely easy to find. Now it doesn't always give you their email address and they don't always check their messages on LinkedIn. So you have to do some other work to find their contact info. But I have found that that's been extremely useful for identifying the people that I need to get a hold of in order to get what I need. And so I'm, I'm going to pick that. Good pick. And then as far as anything else goes, you picked Way of Kings. Um, I am going to throw in that uh, I, I did the come on, man, with Brandon Sanderson. And then I turned around and bought his book. And it was actually pretty good. So Skyward uh, by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, uh, Way of Kings and then the, the uh, Stormlight series. Yeah. yeah. Stormlight Archive is awesome. Uh, yeah. Mistborn was how I got into his stuff. And then I like read everything else that he had done and didn't realize that he had written more Mistborn books. Yeah. So. Mistborn, I actually like the um, ones with Wax and Wayne at the end a lot better than the normal, than the first Mistborn books. So. Yeah. Um, when I when I initially read the Wax and Wayne books, I, I was like, these just, you know, I really like the original ones with the original crew. Mm. And then I went back and reread them. And I'm like, ah, the Wax and Wayne ones are pretty, pretty darn good. They are. So they're a slightly different flavor. Um, one other thing that I'll pick is he has a series of short stories that kind of fill in some of the holes because all of this happens in the same, what he calls Cosmere. Yeah. Um, and so it was pretty interesting to um, to read some of those. Uh, the book is called Arcanum Unbound. 
Oh, I haven't read that one. And yeah, so you get all this stuff. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it, but essentially, um, yeah, there's a, there's a tale in there about uh, Kelsier from the original books. Yep. And it made me start wondering when he's going to crop up in the Wax and Wayne books. Oh, wow. I'll just leave it at that. So um, go read it because it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's that sounds good. I thought I've read every one of his. I haven't even heard of that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think I've read everything that he's written at this. Well, listened to it on Audible or read it. But yeah. My my favorite actually is um probably well, Way of Kings is just epic, but um the Reckoner series is probably my favorite because it's a fast read and they're so fun. Um the uh yep. Steelheart book. Yeah, those were really good too. They those are not Cosmere books, but they are really good. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. Yep. All right. Well, we could sit here and geek out, I guess, about Brandon Sanderson books, but um <laughs> if if people want to find you online, see what you're working on these days, uh where do they go? Uh github.com slash the iron cook. Um our our latest project isn't open sourced yet, but we're probably gonna release it here in the next few months and hopefully for people that want to run jobs on a schedule or they want, they want to reach in through their network and script something that it's just drop dead easy. And so that's kind of the next thing that we're kind of playing around with. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up, but thank you for coming Bart. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right, folks, we will wrap this up and we will be back in a week. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.